Hello everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Sandra Fauconnier and I am a long-term Wikimedian and I currently work with OpenRefine. I will give you a tutorial of Wikimedia Commons uploading with OpenRefine. Here's a few slides. Um, in this session, we will actually start with a recorded demos demonstration. I am doing that because I am a little bit hesitant to do a live demo. You always know that uh, these things tend to go wrong sometimes. So there's a pre-recorded demonstration, but I am around um, and um, the demo will be shorter than the session. So whenever you have questions uh, while you see me do things, please ask your questions. I would say either in the chat, but it would even be better if you ask the questions in the sessions either bet. Um, we have an either bet for this session and you can place your questions there. Then in that case, if you do that, I can see your questions, uh, certainly. Um, and after the demo, we will answer those. Maybe some of your questions will already been answered while I was giving the demo, but the ones that remain, I will be available to answer them. Um, let me start by giving a very brief intro introduction for those who don't know OpenRefine yet. OpenRefine um, is software, free open source software that is used actually quite widely. It is quite popular software used for data wrangling, for working with large data sets, data, um, data operations, modifying data, and preparing to upload data to other databases. People sometimes jokingly call it spreadsheets or Excel on steroids. It's basically is a little bit like Excel in the sense that uh, you see as you in the screenshot here, you see the data in a grid view. So you see it a little bit like a spreadsheet and you can do all sorts of operations with it, but it's way more powerful than Excel. Um, it runs as a desktop application. So it's software that you download to your computer and then you run locally. Um, it, it is a little bit funny though, because um, it will not run as a native application, but it will open a tab in your web browser and you will work with OpenRefine in your web browser. You will see me do that pretty soon. Um, so I already said OpenRefine is quite widely used. Um, it is widely used um, not just by Wikimedians. Um, it has been used by Wikimedians for a while. But it's software that has been around for more than 10 years now, and it's, it is used in the cultural sector by museums, cultural institutions, libraries, a lot by libraries, actually, uh, they are our main user group, um, but also data scientists, journalists who work with uh, lots of data by activists um, around the world. We also, our interface is also international, we have translations of our interface. Um, in languages like French, but also Japanese, uh, Indonesian uh, languages, etc. Um, so since several years, uh, you can use uh, OpenRefine uh, for batch editing Wikidata. So you can use it to do data imports into Wikidata. And in the last year, we have also worked on a project to extend OpenRefine with functionalities for Wikimedia Commons. And that is what I'm going to show you in this session with a focus on um, uploading new files to Wikimedia Commons. And that is brand new. Um, oh, just to reinforce that uh, OpenRefine is actually indeed a widely used software. This is something I really like. This is a t-shirt that an OpenRefine fan has made. And the t-shirt says, OpenRefine is magic. Um, I recommend actually Wikimedians who are interested in working with cultural institutions to work learn to work with OpenRefine because it is a software that is really popular in the cultural sector. So it will help you with your work in general. Um, but so going back to Wikimedia Commons support, um, we uh, have been, as I said, we have been working on Wikimedia Commons support for a year now. And at this point in time, you can already do batch editing existing files on Wikimedia Commons with OpenRefine and file upload, which I'm gonna demo now. Uh, the focus is structured data, though, uh, so um, you can do wiki text editing with OpenRefine, but we really, really emphasize uh, using structured data. Uh, it is uh, yeah, a tool that is focused on structured data, so uh, it has been used for Wikidata, and now we also use it for structured data on Wikimedia Commons. 
Um, in terms of difficulty of how to learn to use the tool, um, it is actually, we see it as um, the, the replacement for the ClamWiki toolset. Uh, the ClamWiki toolset was an advanced tool uh, that was easy to use by, or not easy to use, but it was really powerful for cultural institutions um, who would do exports from their database and then uh, import files into Wikimedia Commons. We see OpenRefine as a replacement for that, but it's way easier to use than the ClamWiki toolset. I would say in terms of difficulty, it is somewhere maybe in the middle between PattyPen and the ClamWiki toolset. And unlike PattyPen, uh, OpenRefine, as I said, supports structured data. So uh, that is a big advantage. You can add structured data from the start and uh, it is a tool that cultural institutions already use. So your partners uh, will might already be familiar with it and it will help you in your partnerships. Um, by the way, we are doing this project thanks to a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation for which I thank them. Um, the project runs until the end of October 2022. So after this session, the demo that you are getting now is not the final uh, software. We will still add some user-friendly features. And actually, I got the good news that after October, we will also have a budget, not so much for new development, but for bug fixes, we will be able to do that. And we will also have a budget for training in the Wikimedia movement. So this session is definitely not the only one that you will see, but uh, I will look into various ways of helping Wikimedians use OpenRefine better. Um, if the session is, by the way, going too fast for you, which I totally get, um, there is already some documentation on Wikimedia Commons um, about batch editing and batch uploading. So we have an info page on Wikimedia Commons, which you can consult. And that one, ta-da, we already have 12,000 uploads, which is great. Um, there you find a link to um, how you can add structured data with OpenRefine. And there is also a Google document with instructions on how to upload files with the current features. Um, this is not the final documentation because we will still improve our features. And uh, I will put, of course, final documentation on Wiki and in places where the Wikimedia community can use them better and not the Google Doc. So demo time, I will actually start demonstrating um, how very quickly how you do batch uploading to Wikimedia Commons with OpenRefine. In the course of this session, I can absolutely not show all the features. Um, we have too little time for that. I think to, to learn to use OpenRefine well, I would say take an hour or two. Um, then you can learn the features of the software itself and you can also learn to do the Wikimedia things with it. Uh, in this session, I will really focus on uploading new files, so I will actually not go too much in depth into all the very powerful things in general that OpenRefine can do. But as I said, later in the year, we will start on training, and that is also something I really want to cover, learning to use OpenRefine in general. Uh, by the way, on the internet, there are many, many tutorials that are actually quite great for that too. So. Uh, um, it, it is not the first time that people are learning to use OpenRefine. So, but yes, for this demonstration, I am going to show you how to upload a set of files. I have chosen a very small set of files on my computer right here. Uh, like most Wikimedians in the world, I go around, uh, I see the world and I take pictures. And then I have many, many pictures on my computer that I've taken myself of interesting things in the world and I have not uploaded them to comments yet. And I thought, Sandra, for the demo on, at Wikimania, let's fix some pictures you took in 2020. So I have around nine, ten, nine pictures of um, a really big structure around my hometown, Rotterdam. This is the Rosenberg wind wall. Um, and I also have some pictures of a public artwork in Belgium. Uh, this artwork is called, I wrote it down, it's French. Uh, it, well, it has a French name, Le Vent Souffle Où Il Veut, from uh, the artist called uh, Daniel Buren, and that is on the, the, on the Belgian coast. Um, and I will show you how I would go about uploading these files. So first, of course, I have these files on my computer, and I am going to get their file paths, their, their local file paths. This is something that we hope to improve with the feature. 
um, so that you don't have to do this step anymore. But basically, I am now going to get a list of file paths. Um, I'm doing that on my Mac here. I'm going to copy the file paths here. And I am going to open refine in my browser now. I have started open refine on my computer and open refine is open here. And I now have on my clipboard, on my computer clipboard, the list of file names. And as you can see here, this is the start screen of open refine and you can start using open refine with many different starting points like a file on your computer, but also a web address, something like an API of a, of a cultural institution. Cultural institutions will be super happy with that, uh, that they can just feed you know, a, a link from their API in here and then open refine will load the data. Uh, you can also do an external database. I've never done that in my life, but it's possible. Uh, you can do Google data sheets uh, or Google spreadsheets. Um, we also are building an extension to start from Wikimedia Commons categories to edit these files. I have not added that extension for this demo. Uh, but in this case, I have file paths on my clipboard and I will paste those here. So what you see here is just a link of paths of where I have, uh, I think, around 15, 16 uh, images that I just showed you. And um, this looks good to me. I'm just going to start a project with that. Um, so what you see here is a preview screen. Um, and I am going to tweak some things that now it interprets that uh, I actually have a column name with users and then my username and desktop. That's not what we want. So um, let me see. Yeah, this is what I want. I just want one column with my uh, file paths. Um, just a side note, it is totally fine to start in this way with just file names from your computer, but you can also start with a full spreadsheet, right? Or a full database that maybe you have file paths somewhere um, and you already have the data about these files somewhere on your computer, uh, somewhere in the data set. That is also good. I will actually add them as I go, but this is one way to do it. But you can also have more data to start with. Um, all of that is, by the way, explained also in this Google Doc. Um, so I'm going to start just here with file paths. I forgot to say, um, I am now uploading files from local uh, files on my computer here, but you can also upload from URL. So if you have a cultural institution that has, you know, um, you are partnering with a cultural institution that has files on the internet, that has files on the web uh, of their collections, then you can actually also use these links to upload directly from that so you don't have to download them to your computer. I'm now going to give this project a name. It's a little bit like creating a file. Um, I'm going to say demo Wikimania 2022 and I'm just going to give it the, some tags. Um, when you work with Open Refine all the time, you will have a lot of projects going on in your Open Refine software, and you can use tags to make them discoverable. Um, demo, why not upload, comments. There we go. I will create the project and it loads. And here we are. All right, so we have this list of files on my computer here. Um, it actually says that we have 16 rows, but we only see 10. Open Refine has um, a way to limit the, the view of the data that you have. That is also a thing um, that is a feature to also preserve memory or to be more careful with the memory of your computer. If you are using really big data sets, um, you can have views of fewer data like 50 rows at a time i will now switch to 25 rows and i have a column of files here now of course i want to have some extra information about these files so in the next steps um, and i am going to skip through that in the recording a little bit i will actually use open refine to add some extra columns with information about all these files um, i want to have columns a little bit if you're familiar with Patty Pen, this is very similar 
you want to have columns with all the data that you want to upload to Wikimedia Commons. So you want things like uh, maybe a short description, you want to have information about the creator, the license, the date when the file was created, uh, etc. I will now go ahead and do that. All right, we have, I have proceeded with uh, adding some data about my files here in my uh, OpenRefine project. I have created a column with the file names as I want them to appear on Wikimedia Commons. Um, and for people not super familiar with Wikimedia Commons, these need to be unique. So you will see that I have created unique file names for every file. My original files had very non-descriptive names like image 8025 and I improved that. So I have created a bit of a description in the, inside the file name that's best practice. I have added short descriptions, captions, uh, which will be added as file captions in structured data um, in English and in my native language Dutch. I have also added a column of the things that are depicted in the file because I want to add that as structured data. And um, I added the date when the files were created, all in 2020. And I have also created a column with wiki text. Um, so OpenRefine, as I said, focuses on structured data, adding structured data to files on Commons also when uploading. But files also need to have wiki text. And for that purpose, uh, when you do an upload, uh, it's good to have a column of wiki text. You can also add the wiki text in another place. I'm going to show that later. But uh, if you have diverse wiki text across different files, which I do in this case, you see here one file that shows the wind wall and another file that shows the artwork in Belgium. You see that their wiki text is slightly different. So I have uh, a column with that as well. You may notice for the Wikimedia Commons uh, geeks that this wiki text is super simple and I will talk about that later. Uh, because basically, because we are adding structured data, we can keep the wiki text simple because it will be autofilled uh, by uh, the template on Wikimedia Commons. Uh, so it will automatically show the structured data, which is awesome. Um, cool. Let me make my screen a little bit smaller again. Now, next steps that I need to do is actually, before I can start uploading these files, is I have to make OpenRefine aware that uh, it should work with Wikimedia Commons and that it should be editing Wikimedia Commons and that it should be adding files there and that it adds, should add these, these things, which are now just text strings. Um, I want to help OpenRefine discover these as Wikidata items. So there is a Wikidata item for the Rosenberg wind wall, this really big wind wall in concrete near Rotterdam. And there's also a Wikidata item for that artwork, um, basically this one. <laughs> Just I opened it in my image browser. Um, so I want to make sure that uh, OpenRefine knows about the Wikidata items for these. Um, so I will do a few steps for that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am actually going to tell OpenRefine, hey, OpenRefine, you are now going to edit a Wikimedia Commons. OpenRefine is able to edit Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikibases. So anyone who manages a Wikibase can also edit their Wikibase. And you basically have to tell OpenRefine, OK, now in this case, you're not editing Wikidata, but another website. And for that, you to, and all of that is also explained in the Google document again. Um, you select under the Wikidata extension menu here in OpenRefine, you say, I am going to select the Wikibase instance that I want to work against. And, um, oh, I already have Wikimedia Commons here, I will remove it. So in this menu here, you see a link that says discover Wikibase instances. If you click that link, it will open a new tab in your browser, and then you will go to a GitHub repository that has various what we call Wikibase manifests. These are various settings files for different type for different Wikibases. There is, of course, Wikidata itself, which you will actually don't have not not have to enter into Wikidata because it is there by default, and there is also the Rhizome one. Rhizome has a Wikibase. 
uh, that's a cultural institution in New York, but there's also one for Wikimedia Commons. I'm going to click that one and then you see some code here, which is basically the settings file that OpenRefi needs to, to know how Wikimedia Commons works. Um, I can either copy that code and paste it, or I can go to the raw and then uh, raw version of this code and then click the URL of that and I can add that URL in here or I can paste the JSON that I just saw. Um, I think the URL is slightly better because then if this JSON ever changes in this GitHub repository, then um, yeah, this URL will help to keep it up to date. Add Wikibase. And now I have, I have added Wikimedia Commons and I am going to select it just so, to make sure that it's blue. And now OpenRefine is aware that it has to work with Wikimedia Commons and not with Wikibase. I'm going to say OK. And now there's one intuitive, not very intuitive thing that you need to do. And this is a feature that we want to add. We want to improve this. We have ideas to improve this. You basically have to tell OpenRefine that it needs to create new items, needs to upload new files for this column. Um, I am going now, now to do some things. I'm going to say reconcile, start reconciling, and I am going to reconcile this column, this column against Wikimedia Commons. Basically, what I am doing here is I am going, reconciliation is actually looking up a list of values in your data set and looking it up against another database that can be Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons. And in this case, I'm looking up the file names on Wikimedia Commons, but they don't exist yet, and that's totally fine. So my reconciliation is running, and that will take a few seconds. The reconciliation is done. Um, if these files would actually have existed already on Wikimedia Commons, the links would have been blue. Uh, I would have had blue links here, hyperlinks, and I would have had a little pop-up showing me, oh, this is this file, this is this file, and I could click it and go to the file on Commons. But obviously, I am creating new files here. So I am actually now going to tell OpenRefine, again, here under the reconciliation menu, create a new item for each cell. And basically that will tell OpenRefine that it will have to upload new files for me. Uh, you see now that each little um, like uh, cell in the data grid has a new label, this one, a little grayed out label. And the column has also has this uh, bright green underlined, uh, yeah, line, <laughs> bright green line. And that means that uh, it's OpenRefine now knows, oh, I am working with Wikimedia Commons and I'm going to create new files for you. Um, another thing I want to do is I will actually, I would like to look up the Wikidata items for these two things, the Rosenberg wind wall and the artwork by Daniel Buren. And for that, I am going to do exactly the same thing. I am going to reconcile, but against Wikidata. Um, so I say, I will do that a little bit slower here. Um, under each column in OpenRefine, you have a menu with all the powerful things you can do with that column. Um, the, 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 yeah, that menu is for most columns the same. You have reconcile at the bottom, which means look up in another database, start reconciling. And then by default, you will already have the Wikidata one in here. And when you edit Wikimedia Commons, just now what I showed you, you will also have Wikimedia Commons here. I am selecting Wikidata and then, yeah, why not? Installation artwork. Um, it will look up what I have in this column uh, superficially and it will kind of try to guess what kind of type it is, what kind of instance of it is. Um, and in this case, I have two artworks, public artworks. So I, this is probably quite good uh, installation artwork. Sometimes when you have a column with really mixed things, you can just say reconcile against no particular type, which I'm doing here, but I'm super happy with the installation artwork and I'm going to say start reconciling. That will also take a few seconds to do. When you have really big data sets, this takes a while. So uh, whenever you want to do this and you have a lot of data, take into account that you need time because this algorithm uh, needs time to look up things on Wikidata. Now we see that it has found this work, 
uh, the work by Daniel Buren in Newport, Newport. Um, but it has not yet found the Rosenberg wind wall. I will just do a search on Wikidata because it's probably not described as installation artwork. And now I have matched this as well. So my two values here have been matched. I am super happy. So you see that the links are blue. I can actually click on those links and it has linked those cells. OpenRefine has linked those cells to the Wikidata item. And it is a really small picture here. Well, it's a white picture. It's a little bit like a, a, a panorama. Um, but I want to upload my own photos as well because I created nice photos. Cool. So basically my data set is now ready for um, preparing it for uploads. You see that some data is missing. Um, I, of course, I need to add information about who created these files. I am the photographer. Uh, there is not information yet about the license. Well, there is some here in the wiki text, but I also want to add it as structured data because it's the same for all the files. I will do that at the later step. And that later step is called schema building. So the next step is you are going to go to a next tab here in OpenRefine. You have the tab of your rows that you're looking at, and then you can go to the tab schema. And basically here is where you construct the, like, um, I would say the template in which your edit will happen, uh, the structured data edit will happen. I will start by clicking, you can also access this by uh, the menu here. So that's exactly the same. You go to edit wiki base schema and you go there as well. You say add media and then I get um, some empty information that I can fill with the data that I have here. And I am going to do some stuff and maybe speed up the recording a little bit. Um, first thing you need to do is actually tell it, oh, you need to work with my file names here. So um, these are the files that I want to create new. This is the column in which I reconciled just now, as I showed you. So this is the column that OpenRefine knows it needs to create on Wikimedia Commons. So I am going to drag that one. It is underlined in green here as the main thing that needs to be edited. And then I, OpenRefine is asking me for the file path. Well, I have that here. So I can drag that column here. So it will take actually the values of what we have in the data set here. And it will input it there in my schema. And then the file name that I want to give it, I have the wiki text. And then I can also add file captions. I want to add a caption in English. And that's this one. I want to add a caption in Dutch in my native language. That is this one. And then I can also add some structured data statements. Um, and the, so, some statements I'm going to add is what it depicts. Depicts, and then it depicts the artwork that I just reconciled. So it depicts this thing. You see that it also has this green line below it. Um, that is uh, shows that it has been reconciled against the database, in this case, against Wikidata. And I am going to add some more information, like when the file was created. File and some more stuff like who created it, um, the uploader, etc. All right, I am ready, adding some uh, basic statements. And um, of course, this looks extremely abstract. And I actually want to preview what it will look like when I upload this file to Wikimedia Commons. It doesn't look fully like Wikimedia Commons, of course, but it is a little bit of a preview what uh, each file, what kind of data it will have. So if you click here in the preview tab, you move from the schema tab to the preview tab, then you can actually see each individual item or the first, uh, the first ones of the set that you have here. And you see uh, actually the specific data that it will add. So you see that it adds a depict statement, source of file, copyright license, copyright status, etc. 
Um, we also have an issue step. Um, in this case, it only tells me, oh, Sandra, watch out, you will upload new files. Well, that's exactly what I want. Of course, I need to be careful doing that. But um, if there would be things wrong here, like for instance, I could have made a mistake in formatting the dates, etc., I would also get notifications here about that. So I think my preview looks rather good and I am ready to actually do my uploads to Wikimedia Commons. Um, to do that, um, I can go to the extension menu again here, extension, the Wikidata extension, um, and I select the menu item, upload edits to Wikibase. And then I only need to look in. Um, I, can, I should actually double check here that I am indeed working with Wikimedia Commons. So we get a little logo here and uh, it also says Wikimedia Commons. If I would still uh, have Wikidata as the wiki that it, that it would show Wikidata or it can show Wikibase. But in this case, I've added Wikimedia Commons and I am going to enter my credentials here. Doing that now and I am logging in. And then I create an edit summary. So this is the edit summary that every file will get on Wikimedia Commons. So um, I'm just going to say public artwork photo draft in 2020, no, uh, on work. And I am going to say upload edits, and then it will do the upload for me. The upload is running. And so the upload is done. I am going to go to my contributions on Wikimedia Commons. I actually had to do a bit of, <laughs> I forgot to add a statement. So I, I did an additional statement afterwards. I am just going to uh, show you two things. Um, here's uh, where I uploaded the files. And you see that with the edit summary of the file, you see one link that says details. If you click on that link, you will go to a tool called edit groups. Um, and that is a tool also created by Pintosh, our Open Refine's lead developer, um, which allows you to undo batches. Uh, so if I have made mistakes in this batch, in this uh, set of files, then I can undo this. Um, I have to say, I'm not sure if it will be possible to also undo uploads, entire uploads, because I'm not sure that uh, Wikimedia Commons allows that to any user. But if I have, for instance, added um, additional um, structured data statements to these files and I made a mistake, I already did that. I make mistakes all the time. I am a, a very confused person. Um, then I can just undo an entire group. And that's also reassuring if you make mistakes, you can actually undo them. Um, edit groups also exist for Wikidata. So people uh, working with Wikidata doing batch uploads there may be familiar with it already. Um, I'm just gonna click on one file here and open it in a new tab to inspect my uploads. And uh, I actually want to double check if it went well because it's an animated GIF. <laughs> uh, I created an animation for this artwork. Um, so as you can see, it shows uh, the file captions that I added to the file. Um, and although I used very minimal wiki text, you do see that it has that, that it is loading. So it is like basically this wiki text. Uh, let me show you a bit bigger. I updated it a little bit to also include my name. Um, it is this wiki text, super simple. And it generates this because the wiki text template is actually, is actually Lua driven and it loads um, yeah, uh, data from Wikidata and Wikimedia Commons. So it shows information about the sculpture and about uh, me as a photographer. So if we look at the structured data tab, you see that all the structured data that I um, included here in OpenRefine in the schema has also, yeah, this is a, an additional uh, edit that I did afterwards that it shows that the structured data yeah, I added, added in the schema is also added to Wikimedia Commons. And that's 
by the way, I forgot to say one thing, um, and it's an important thing. It is mentioned actually quite clearly um, um, in this document here. Um, uploading files to Wikimedia Commons is only possible with OpenRefine 3.7 or newer. So for OpenRefine, um, our current version, if you go to OpenRefine's website, um, OpenRefine.org, then you will see, if you click the download button, that our official version at this moment is 3.6.0. Um, but we always are working on new code. So um, if you want to download, uh, if you want to do an upload to Wikimedia Commons, you actually have to use 3.7 and you can find it on GitHub. It is also included as a link in this document. Um, under download instructions. Oh, heading no longer exists. Let me see. Ah, download and install refine. And then we go to um, OpenRefine's GitHub repository. And you have a header that is called snapshot releases. That's basically the latest code of yesterday that was built uh, automatically. And you can download that for your own platform. Windows users, I would encourage you to download the one with embedded Java runtime environment. We just noticed that that tends to work better. Um, that's it. Sorry for forgetting to say this. It's important. Uh, use 3.7 for this. And I welcome questions. Hi, everyone. If all is well, you should be hearing me live now. Uh, I hope that goes well. I am now juggling with two computers, so please bear with me. I am trying to juggle this. Um, I see that people have asked a lot of questions in the Etherpad, and I am super happy that I did this pre-recording because I could simultaneously let the recording run and already ask questions, so that is a really efficient use of time. I hope my answers in the um, Etherpad have been okay and usable for people. I would say um, I can actually see the chat and I see the Etherpad in front of me. So if people have more questions, I will answer those still. And I can answer these live now. Um, do we have any questions that people want me to answer live? I can also repeat some of the major questions that happened in the Etherpad while I don't see other questions popping up because they, the answer will actually be nice for the recording. One main question that people had was, um, does OpenRefine support all formats? Uh, I assume that's all the formats that you can do on Wikimedia Commons. The answer is yes. Um, with a little hesitation, we hope. Um, we tried uh, OpenRefine that with uh, uploading with many, many different formats already. Uh, I uploaded videos, I uploaded animated GIFs, uh, someone did PDFs. Um, that all went well. However, we are still noticing some trouble with, for instance, big TIFF files. And I hear that these are also in general for any upload to on Wikimedia Commons quite uh, thickly. So um, we are still looking into that, but in theory, um, we are indeed uh, aiming to support all the formats that Wikimedia Commons also supports. Um, I think that's important for the recording uh, because I did not mention that in the, <laughs> in the video. Um, I see that there is a question, are you still looking out for beta testers? Yes, um, I notice I cannot discover all the mistakes that the software currently has. I cannot discover all the flaws. So um, actually um, the Google Doc that I shared, you can use that to on your own, do your first uploads. And if you encounter any issues, either report them on GitHub. If you feel okay doing that, it's really, GitHub will not bite. We are super happy if people support issues on GitHub or just get in touch with me and um, I will then help you one-on-one -on -one and also report issues. Uh, we already have some people doing that, but more is better because, you know, more eyeballs see more things and also have more ideas for features that we need. So yes, please, please test. Um, if you have materials to work with, I will be grateful. Um, it's as you as you see at the current state is still a little bit experimental. We will add some features that will make it a little bit more user friendly. But um, yes, that should be uh, yeah very nice that uh, people do beta testing. Um, let me see. 
we um, uh, there was one thing I also did not mention in the video, but it's uh, I think also really good for the um, uh, recording. Um, people are asking. Um, maybe some people have trouble installing OpenWeFi. Normally, if you have a normal computer and you use a browser on that computer, you should be able to install it. But sometimes at work, people have firewalls or there are connectivity issues or something like that. So we do have cases where people cannot really run OpenWeFi very well because they are in a work environment where they cannot install any software. We also have OpenWeFi in the cloud for Wikimedians, and that is on PASS. And I put that in the Etherpad as well. Maybe it is already getting hidden, hidden among all the nodes. So I will also put that link in the chat here. Um, PASS is basically and I have to use the right keyword, keyboard, I'm sorry, um, is basically a cloud place where you can run all sorts of scripts, but we also have OpenRefine running there. I do have to say, it is not managed by us, OpenRefine itself. It's run by the very enthusiastic volunteers that do the pause installation. And um, we have been uh, having a little bit of difficulty installing the last version of OpenRefine. So 3.6 is not there yet. And that's a bit of a hassle. So. Um, Please bear with us if that one is a little bit unstable. We're doing our best. <laughs> we're doing this also mostly with yeah little budgets and, and many of us as volunteers. So we do our best to support you there. Let me see if there are more questions either in the chat that have popped up new or that I can answer here. Um, I see a question offline data verification. Can that be done? I'm not sure if I understand that question. I'm very sorry. I that that doesn't really uh, give me. Uh, I, I, I actually don't know what you mean. <laughs> I feel a bit blonde now. Um, but uh, if you have a bit more explanation about what that is or a link, then I will still try to answer that question because I am intrigued actually. Um, let me see. Uh, I will scroll down and see that there are other questions. Uh, I got a suggestion um, for to look at photo mechanic. I am curious what the tool does because I am not very familiar with that. Um, a general question. Um, yeah, so uh, indeed the pass that we just talked about that still runs an older version. I am sorry for that. Um, um, so when will 3.7 be released? We are working really hard to have that released by the end of our funded uh, Wikimedia project, which is the end of October 2022. Uh, my colleagues are working like beasts to get that done. Um, is it possible to use OpenRefine for batch editing of Wikidata records? Yes, and that has been the case for f quite a few years already. So any the current version of OpenRefine, you can use it to edit Wikidata. That is actually where it all started. Uh, Wikidata editing has been the first uh, Wikimedia implementation of OpenRefine. And um, now we are adding the Commons one, but the Wikidata one is really the old one that many people already do and is really well tested. I can try to find the link to our info page on Wikidata, but if you Google Wikidata tools, open refine, you will find the info page about that. Um, I have a batch of TIFF files I want to upload. What do you recommend? Can I just give it a try or should I convert them? I would just give it a try. We would be, if, if you're okay with being a little bit of a test, um, how do you say that, uh, a guinea pig, a tester, uh, we would actually really appreciate if people want to try with TIFF files. I don't have TIFF files lying around randomly. So if you have them, please try um, and let us know how it goes. Maybe it goes well. Um, so um, another question, and that's a great one. <laughs> All the questions are great, you're great. Um, can OpenRefine get some metadata from the image or other files like the EXIF metadata? Um, yes, well, no, at this moment, not. Um, we have been thinking about it since the start that that would be really, really handy to have, um, but it would require us to code something very specific of you know, EXIF retrieval inside OpenRefine. It's absolutely not impossible, but we cannot do it in the current grants. We are already you know, working super, super hard <laughs> the end night to finish the basic features we want to have. And EXIF is uh, a wish that we know is there and we 
cannot support it yet. Maybe if we get another follow-up grant, we hope that that could be something we can do. I did include in the Google document, though, with the instructions for, Wikide for Wikimedia Commons batch uploading, the one that I talked about a few times in the recording, I have included a small um, like note with instructions on how to use an external EXIF um, script, which is really easy to use that you you give your files to that script and it, your files will then have a spreadsheet with all the exif and that you can feed them to open fine i've done that a few times and that works really like a charm basically what we would ideally like to do at some point is have the same mechanic inside open fine of course you just give open fine files and then it will read the exif that you are interested in so we know that the need is there it's just yeah uh that's for next iteration um can um Oh, and thank you for making notes of my answer. That's awesome. Is there any chance of Dave getting David Ewing to create some new tutorials? He has a fantastic voice. I have never heard his voice. So I, I that would be great. I don't know. I, I'm actually, I've been working for Open Refine for a year now, and I have never been in touch with him. So I don't know the guy. I just know that he created the tool at some point. Uh, but I will keep that suggestion in mind, because who knows? You know, it would be nice. Um, yeah, if you have other suggestions for people with good voices who should do tutorials, then uh, keep us posted. Um, let's see. Uh, do we have other questions? Or are we done with questions? I'm also looking at the chat. Um, ah, what were the solutions for batch uploading before Open Refine? Um, there were and are still a lot of solutions. Um, Many people use bots. If you can, if you are a programmer, you uh, will be inclined to write a bot for you know your your batch uploads. That's what where all you know the batch uploads started, and then other tools came around. A tool called Pattypan, um, which has been uh, broken for a f for a while in the past year, but it's back up. Pattypan is still um, is has been repaired, so you can use it again, but it does not do structured data. And I expect that Patty Pen will also not support structured data in the future. Uh, structured data is a quite complicated thing to add. And I can imagine that people will, I would really like to see that people move towards uh, Open Refine. Um, so I really hope that people are open to start using Open Refine. Um, there, are, there are quite a lot of other batch uploading tools. If you Google Wikimedia Commons batch uploading, you will find a few um instruction pages that lists various tools that are, are popular for that um another one that has been quite popular but that one is also sunsetted it does not work at all anymore is the glam wiki tool set that was a really really powerful one where you could input xml files where cultural institutions could do you know really complicated things with their databases and pushing their databases to commons but that one is gone um and there are other tools still around. Um, but in my biased opinion, Op Opera Refine is a really good addition to that because it adds so much flexibility. Um, it is very possible that you use PyWikiBots, yes, because that's the bot framework that a lot of bots uh, programmers are uh, yeah, using to write bots. So if you do some scripting, then uh, that is your place to go. And I see that Alex has also linked some uh, uh yeah information about other tools vicuña up uploader is indeed i think still used um i don't use it myself but uh i know the about tool i see here that the counter has done i'm not sure if that's really hard cut or if i am now not hearable anymore by anyone um but i think we are a bit at time for this session um so um, I will check out the tutorial by David. <laughs> I am very curious to hear his voice. Uh, I really hope this was uh, informative for people. Um, and as I said in my recording before, um, I will be back. We will be back with more tutorials and training. And uh, I really hope many of you show up there and we can start a small community of Open Refine users uh, for Wikimedia Commons. Thank you. Yeah, 
in my case, the screen says zero time remaining, but I can apparently just keep going on. Um, yeah.